Hello. I haven't actually done a video for quite a while, so I thought I'd tell you what I've been up to and what I'm going to be doing in the future. I don't know if you can see in the background, but I've, uh, I like to challenge myself and I think it's important for everybody's mental health that you, you continue in some sort of education. So I trained as a tailor, so I've made a tailored coat in a wool cashmere mix and I had a little bit of fabric left. So I did an embroidery design on a, a leather panel, leather handbags. And I've got a gorgeous matching handbag. So these projects are quite challenging, but they do keep your brain active and your mind active. I've also been experimenting with fabric dye and um, you can't quite see the colours properly, but it's, this is sort of a silk scarf that's turned out really well in shades of blue and purple. So I have done um, a few jumpers that were the wrong colour for me, they didn't suit me. I've dyed them slightly darker. So coming up on the blog, I'm going to be going back to the vintage fashion that I really love. And one of the first things I'm going to make is a pair of um, utility dungarees. Now, in the 1940s in England, this is an American pattern. So they didn't have to conform to the same restrictions we did. So there's a lot of buttons up the side of this jumpsuit utility wear. They wouldn't have been allowed in England at the time. You're allowed a maximum of five. And so it's not quite true to form, but it's near enough. And similarly, that's sort of veering towards the end of the um, World War II where fashion was uh, utility. It's sort of to go towards the new look where skirts are wider, more fabric was allowed, not far less restrictions. Now that definitely is a, a new look style in 1950s, so it's post-war. And I find that era of, of fashion fascinating and I, I'm forever reading more about it. The restrictions were intense in England, which is why the GI lads who came over brought silk stockings, which the girls just love because there was nothing like that here in England for them to, to enjoy. And if you wanted to, you could still buy original vintage patterns, but there's a caveat, the sizes are totally, totally different because women were smaller, that the food was on rationing, it was better food actually. It was slimmer, you worked hard, you were slightly muscular on your arms maybe, so your bust was smaller, your waist would be tiny, so you'd have to do a heck of a lot of pattern adjusting to get a true vintage pattern, unless you've got a lucky figure that way to fit you. And the other thing I really do strongly believe in is looking after your mental health, and to do that I think you should be on a lifeline learning policy. And in the last two or three years, I've, I've done quite a lot of study. In fact, I haven't stopped because it keeps the brain active. It stops you thinking, it stops you worrying, it stops you dwelling on things. And it's so active to keep you young. So I've been doing some um, counselling courses and I've got uh, a level two certificate in counselling skills and I've got a level three diploma in counselling skills. And I've also got a level two uh, in domestic abuse and I'll, I'll talk to you some other time about those. The other thing I've been doing is, you, did you know you can get free courses from the Open University? Well, I've done plenty of courses. Some are just two hours, some are a couple of weeks. I've done a course in critical criminology. I've done a course in um, challenging ideas about how to treat mental health issues and how we can think differently about people who suffer it. I have done um, quite a long course in the Holocaust, why it happened, how it happened, the effect of people, the effect it still has today. I have done a course in First World War, because my, my grandfather fought in the First World War, about trauma and memory loss and PTSD. So it all ties into mental health, which I'm fascinated in. Another course I did, um, Making Sense of Ourselves, 
looking at different psychological topics in particular I was looking at the psychology of illness because as you know I have Parkinson's I've been doing a really really fascinating quite long course in the health and well-being in ancient Greek <laughs> ancient Rome um, it was investigating the health of people and in, in those times and, and the treatments they had so that was a six week long course which is quite good what else have I done oh there's so many um I did a course in how to help people cope when they're isolated this was during the pandemic and it was uh, how the experiences of ex-prisoners can help us to to think about being isolated and how it can be a positive ex experience I also did a course on exercise and mental health so I have been extremely busy and I do think it's important to keep your mind going you is uh, if you don't do anything if you just sit feeling bored and fed up and wishing life was different you're never going to get anything positive out of life are you you're just going to be thinking up your mind's going to be overactive and you're going to end up losing friends and just doing and saying the wrong thing. So keep your mind busy with sewing. Um, I've upcycled a, um, a very old cabinet and it looks fantastic. I've painted it in chalk paint and I've, uh, I'm in the middle of doing a table to match. So that, you know, the, all these projects do require coordination, mental health and everything. So back to the blog, do keep following my blog. I haven't been doing much on it because I've been studying as I said, so um, I, I will continue to study. I'm going to do some more Open University courses. They are free. Everything I've done is free, so there's absolutely no excuse. So broaden your mind, broaden your outlook, stop dwelling on yourself, and, and just enjoy life because as life is for living, no matter what age you are, learning helps, be it sewing. Ah, oh, you know what I mean. So thank you for listening. Bye.